Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Welcome to our uh, next lesson in the tafsir of Surah Yasin. Can you please type in the chat box if you can hear me? Just type a yes if you can, inshallah. That would be much appreciated. And yes, the Arabic course will be starting on Monday, inshallah. Anyway, let's talk about that soon. So as always, I would love to invite you, O oh seekers of knowledge, welcome to the Garden of Jannah. Inshallah, this is our second last tafsir class. Tomorrow will be our last one. And inshallah, may Allah ta'ala benefit us with the knowledge that we will be gaining today and let us uh, be benefited by the reminders as well. Today's content, we'll be talking about the recompense of the criminals. We'll be talking about, yesterday we talked about Jannah, we talked about the beautiful wonders of Jannah and the blessings that we will be having. Um, and today, you know, we need to balance that out by knowing a little bit about Jahannam as well and knowing about what will happen on the day of judgment and the fact that our hands and our feet will be talking. How is that going to be possible? And we're going to be talking about how Allah reverses the creation and also the fact that Quran is not poetry. So as always, I'd like to remind you to register for the five-day Quranic Arabic course. Um, the link is uh, in my bio or the link is um, in the description box. So subhanAllah, it's going to be amazing. MashaAllah, we have so many students from around the world. And I'm looking forward to seeing, not seeing, but you know, having everybody there. And inshallah, participating in the comment box. Uh, inshallah, we have five days with amazing content and subhanAllah, there's only three days left. So, you know, today is Friday, then we have Saturday, Sunday, and then on Monday, inshallah, at eight o'clock, um, we will be starting the Arabic course. And it's very exciting because we will uh, be doing a Quran giveaway and you'll have uh, a chance to win this amazing Quran, inshallah, uh, inshallah ta'ala. So let's continue on. Let's go on with verse 59. So we're nearly at the end. So yesterday we talked about um, the, the, you know, the abode of the paradise, uh, people of paradise. And now we're talking about the criminals. So, you know, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this announcement and he will say, وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ What does that mean? Stand apart today. Okay, isolate yourselves, separate yourselves today. Oh, you criminals, you little criminals, like subhanAllah. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling you a criminal. Oh, may Allah protect us, of course. But subhanAllah, when you think about this ayah, you know, the disbelievers, they will be in isolation, you know, and, you know, isolation is also a type of punishment, isn't it? That's why the people in solitary confinement, that's why they, you know, if you want to torture someone, then take away everything that he knows, right? And put them in just a room. Yeah. So subhanAllah, the disbelievers will also, it's not just hell is in fire and torture, but, you know, this is also a type of torture. SubhanAllah, may Allah protect us. And it really makes you think that, you know, this is why um, it's so important for ourselves to be connected with the ummah to be connected with our muslim brothers and sisters you know no matter what stage of life we're in subhanallah even though we're in this pandemic and even though we are in lockdown it's so important to continue to communicate and be in touch with our community uh you know it just made me it just made me like remember that you know the fact that you know the strength of our ummah is in the fact that we are one yeah, and as soon as we become separated, then shaitan can come and get between us and start to make us think certain thoughts and um, make us doubt ourselves or have negative thoughts and feelings. And yeah, you know, that's a type of uh, pain and it's a type of punishment as well. So may Allah protect us from that. Anyway, so on the day of judgment, Allah will say, stand apart, you criminals. You're not allowed to be with the other people. Another opinion from the scholars is that actually on the Day of Judgment, Allah will actually tell everybody to go into their separate groups. So each sect will be told to separate themselves from one another. So the polytheists, the mushrikeen in one group, the Christians in one group, the Yahud, 
the Jews in one group and the Muslims will be in their own group as well. So that, you know, everybody is distinguished. And um, also, subhanAllah, even on the Day of Judgment, the hypocrites, the people who were pretending to be Muslims, and uh, they had, they said the Shahada, or they said they're Muslims with their mouths, but in their hearts, there was something different. Even they will be told to stand separately, you know, and they will not be able to hide with the Muslims anymore. You know, in the dunya, they became Muslim because they saw some benefit in it, some worldly benefit, or because they were pressured into it or something like that. Um, but on the day of judgment, everybody's intention, they will be separated according to their beliefs and their intentions, subhanAllah. So, you know, I really want you to think about this in terms of yourself, you know, how can we purify our intentions so that, uh, you know, we, our hearts, our minds, our actions are in a line with what the deen is saying, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, right? So, um, and uh, when I was studying this verse, uh, subhanAllah, I, I came across uh, the saying, Wallahu anam, Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he was one of the greatest scholars uh, of fiqh, you know, he would cry when he would hear, hear this verse, saying that he was scared if he was to be among the criminals mentioned here. Subhanallah. And imagine Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, one of the greatest scholars, one of the greatest scholars of the Hanafi madhab, right? He's the founder of the Hanafi madhab kind of thing. And he's the one who is being scared of of being amongst these criminals and telling and being set apart from the rest of the people, subhanAllah. So who are we to not be scared? Alam Ahad Ilaikum Yabani Adam Alla Ta'budu Shaitan in Nahu Lakum Aduum Mubin. Did I not enjoin upon you? Did not tell you? Did I not like did I not advise you, O children of Adam, that do not worship Shaitan? Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. And that you worship me only. That is the straight path. So subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala is saying that do not worship shaitan. And I want, I want you to really comment down below. How do people worship shaitan? What are the different ways that people worship shaitan? You know, this is, you know, subhanAllah, instead of worshipping the Lord of the creator, the Lord and the creator of the heavens and the earth, they go and worship shaitan. He did nothing. He is doing nothing except leading them to destruction. You know, so how is it that people worship him? So, you know, subhanAllah, it's very interesting uh, because, yes, idols, that's right, Rida. What else? So you can comment below, you can comment in the chat box, magic. Okay, that's very interesting. Yeah, that's right. So people who do magic and stuff, they sell their souls uh, to shaitan uh, to, to, do, to do this uh, abhorrent act by following desires. Yes, Astrid and Nokia 21. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so absolutely. You know, they make their own desires as their gods. So يجعل, uh, um, there's an ayah in the Quran that uh, these people, they make their own desires as their gods following trends and the fashion, music. Okay, yes, shaitan has many different ways of leading people astray here. Yeah? And he will always use your weakest link. SubhanAllah. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. So these are, there are so many ways that people worship shaitan. Even, you know, completely neglecting the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and going in the other direction. Yeah. You know, uh, not believing in the Akhirah. And on top of that, you know what? Shaitan, he is very clever. Even if you believe in God, he's going to try and make you do shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So, you know, what is the next verse saying? وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِيَنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ and he had already led astray from among you much of the creation. So did you not use reason? So remember that shaitan, he has a master plan. Okay. And he will never cease to lead man astray. So the moment that he got kicked out of Jannah, he made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
he literally made a promise to Allah that I will take down as many of your of Bani Adam as I can. I'm going to take them down. I'm going to I'm going to drag them down to hell with me. Subhanallah. And you know, if you you know, we need to know our enemy, right? We need to know ourselves, and we need to know our enemy. That is the only way to success. Because if you know the tricks and the plot of the devil and the plot of and how he uses your weaknesses against you then subhanallah you will have the strength and you will have the knowledge to overcome them and really it's it's hard it's hard it's easy to follow your desires and to do whatever you want that's the point it's easy to do that it's hard not hard but you know it's difficult to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala go against your desires and and do that thing you know that's the whole point it's the test right uh, what's an exam if it's if it's easy right one plus one okay it's two yeah any everybody knows that but the point of the test is that it's supposed to test you so it's up to you your determination and your motivation to pass the test inshallah God. may Allah make us of the people who pass the test and remember when someone goes astray, okay, you know, we see someone on social media going astray or someone in our own life going astray. You know, we give dawah to that person, of course, but, you know, it's not about them. Whatever is happening, we need to think about it from our perspective, for ourselves. This is a reminder for us. This is a reminder for us to hold strongly onto the deen, no matter what. Yeah? So, you know, there's no point of backbiting about that person or, you know, gossiping about that person. You just say, subhanAllah, may Allah protect us from doing such things, you know. It's a reminder for us, yeah. So, subhanAllah, this is the way that we, we should be thinking. And will we, not, will we not take lessons from the former generations, you know. We hear the stories of the former generations and even the, the stories of the prophets, you know, and their clans and their tribes. You know, the people of Noah, the people of Lut, the people of Shu'aib uh, and, you know, Salih and Hud, they were all destroyed in with a huge punishment. So, you know, who who said that it's not going to happen to us, right? May Allah well protect us. Verse 63 to 64. Hadihi jahannam. Hadihi jahannam allati kuntum tu'adun. Oh, subhanallah. I just got shivers just thinking about this, just, just reading it. I got shivers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Hadihi Jahannam. They're going to be standing at the brink of Jahannam, and Allah will say, See, this is the Jahannam that you used to deny. We told you about this Jahannam, but you denied it. So, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, uh, it just makes me think, like, you know, in this dunya, if you want to surprise someone, you buy, like, I don't know, for example, you buy your parents a house, okay? And then, you know, you take them to the house and you cover, you put a blindfold on them and then you stand in front of the house and then you open the, you open the blind cover, the blindfold and you say, this is your new house, congratulations, you know? And they're like so happy, inshallah, may Allah make us all, <laughs> you know? We can make our parents happy and stuff. But, you know, like, it's like, oh, this is our new house. This is our new abode, our new dwelling. But, subhanAllah, just imagine that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this is your new home. Oh, astaghfirullah, may Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Oh, ya Allah. Subhanallah. Okay, subhanAllah. May Allah protect us from Jahannam. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that this is your new home. This is the hellfire that you were promised. Burn therein today for what you used to deny. May Allah protect us. Everybody say Ameen. Ya Rabbul Alameen. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from the fire of hell. Ameen. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. 
Verse 65 is even more scarier, to be honest. Let's talk about this. اليوم نختم على أقواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون. That day we will seal over their mouths. And their hands will speak to us. And their feet will testify about what they used to earn. So, you know, your, your mouth can lie. You can lie with your tongue. But if Allah Ta'ala puts a seal over your mouth and makes your hands and your feet talk, then what else do you have, you know? What else are you going to be doing, you know? So this is literally a first-hand witness. And that was a pun. And the pun was intended. So, subhanAllah, you know, even on the day of judgment, the disbelievers, they'll try to get away. They'll try to get out of the punishment and try to make excuses with their mouths. But their mouths will be sealed shut. Okay. Imagine glue. Okay. And their hands and their feet are going to be talking and saying, yes, he did this and that. And he touched this and he did this and he typed this and he... Uh, took this and he walked towards this and he etc etc may Allah well protect us all so imagine if our hands and our feet can talk imagine if our other body parts could talk as well who knows now there is a hadith okay, let's, let's see the hadith so Anas bin Malik rahimahullah reported radiallahu anhu reported we were in the company of the of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he smiled so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was there and he smiled and then they said he said he said do you know why i laughed we said allah and his messenger know best thereafter he said it was because there came to my mind the talk which the servant would have with his lord on the day of judgment so this is a scene on the day of judgment he would say my lord have you not guaranteed me protection against injustice he would say yes then the servant would say i do not deem valid any witness against me but my own self sir so, subhanallah what is this servant saying? He's saying that, Ya Allah, you are the most merciful and you're the most uh, just, right? He's like, and he's like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say yes, obviously. And then the, the person will say, ya, ya Allah, you know what? I'm not going to accept anybody's, um, I'm not going to accept anybody's witness against, except myself. Okay, I'm going to be my own witness. <laughs> oh, that was a wrong card to be played bro okay because allah ta'ala would say okay well fine you be a witness against yourself and then and that of the two angels who had been appointed to record your deeds then his then a seal would be set upon his mouth and it would be set to his hands and to feet and feet to speak okay and they would speak of his deeds then the mouth would be made free to talk and he would say to the hands and feet be away let there be the curse of allah upon you it was for your safety that i contended meaning that the hands and the feet they will speak the truth yes they will speak the truth and then after they speak the truth about his deeds the mouth will be free again and then he will say why did you testify against us why did you tell us tell about our bad deeds you know i was only trying to save you now you the hands and the feet you're going to be punished in hell as well you know but subhanallah, this is, this is the qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know? Isn't this crazy? Subhanallah. Verse 66. And if we willed, we could have obliterated their eyes. We could have made them blind physically or spiritually, and they would race to find the path. How would they see? So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know what, if we wanted, we could have made the disbelievers blind. Yeah. Okay. We could have made them, we could have taken away their intellect. We could have taken away their physical hearing and seeing. And then, you know, then they would have an excuse to not believe or then not an excuse, but like, then they would be, it would be harder for them to see the truth. Okay. Because their eyes are blind. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them perfect vision, 2020 vision. Oh, 2020. It's 2020, by the way. Okay, anyway. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the aql, the intellect, for them to understand, but they will not understand. Okay? 
And also in the next verse, وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَمَسَخْنَاهُمْ عَلَى مَكَانَتِهِمْ فَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا مُضِيًّا وَلَا يَرْجِعُونَ And if we willed, we could have deformed them in their places. So they would not be able to proceed, nor can they return. So the scholars of opinion is that, you know, if Allah Ta'ala willed, He could have deformed them. He could have... Oops. Okay. If Allah Ta'ala willed, He could have deformed them. He could have made them into uh, into stone, destroyed them, made them paralyzed. Subhanallah. You know? And then they would not even be able to walk. But Allah Ta'ala did not do that. Why? Because He has mercy upon the, dis the disbelievers as well. And the Mawa'id, their place of reckoning, will be the Day of Judgment. This is a very interesting verse, everybody. وَمَن نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ And he to whom we grant long life, we reverse in creation. So will they not understand? What does this mean, everybody? To whom we grant long life. So who lives a long life, everybody? So every, anyone who is old has lived a long life, right? And if you really ponder upon this, it's very interesting because the people who lived the long life, it's as if they have gone back to their original state. And what was their original state? The longer the child of Bani Adam lives, the more he becomes weak and fragile, just like he was when he was a baby. So what are the characteristics of a baby? They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to walk. They can't feed themselves. They can't clean themselves. Subhanallah. And the elderly, as they become more old and old, you know, they become more helpless and fragile. You know, subhanallah, may Allah Ta'ala bless our grandparents and our elderly, you know. But yeah, you know, they become helpless as well. So this is also a sign for us to turn back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we age as well. Yeah, so there are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single aspect of our lives. When we see the baby, it's so cute and we just want to like, ah, oh, it's so cute, you know. But, and everyone loves the baby, but, you know, not many people love the elderly, you know. But in the end, that's when we're going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can love you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you and will be waiting for you to go back to him. You know, And you should be at that stage where you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much that you're just waiting to go back to him as well. Subhanallah. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to say here? Verse 69 to 70. The Quran is not poetry. وَمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ الشِّعْرَ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ وَقُرْآنٌ مُبِينٌ And we did not give Prophet Muhammad knowledge of poetry, nor is it befitting for him. It is not but a message and a clear Qur'an. SubhanAllah. So, the Arabs, we need to understand this. The Arabs, they used to love poetry. You know how we love memes, everybody? Type yes if you love memes. <laughs> Yes, you know how we love memes? The Arabs, they used to love poetry, right? And they used to sing poetry and write poetry and make their own poetry. And, you know, it was, uh, it was uh, and like music and all this kind of stuff. They used to love it. But even before the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet, he was not really into poetry. Like he never ever like like said a word of poetry in his life, you know? And he never made anything in his life. He never composed anything. Okay. So, you know, the people now, when the Quran was revealed, the disbelievers, they would say, oh, it's just poetry. Oh, it's just mag magic. Oh, it's just sorcery. But then, the th like, if they just thought about it, the Prophet ﷺ can't even make poetry. Like, he never was into poetry. Why would he start speaking poetry now? You know? And in fact, the Prophet ﷺ is not allowed to even speak poetry. You know, it was not allowed for him. Even though poetry in Islam is permitted, of course, it's a beautiful thing as well. But the Prophet ﷺ, it was not allowed for him. Why do you think that? Because, of course, the Qur'an was being revealed upon the Prophet ﷺ. And it could not, it was not allowed for him, so he doesn't get mixed up with the Qur'an. Yeah? So that he was only 
allowed to speak from the Quran, like for the Quran, right? This is a clear Quran, the verses of which cannot be imitated or conceived by a mere human being, no matter how much of a literary genius he is. So the, the Arabs, they used to love poetry and not only love poetry, they were geniuses in poetry, right? But when they heard the Quran, they realized that this is not the word of a human being. This is a divine scripture that must, must be from a divine source because no human being would be able to uh, create something like this. And that is why, my dear sisters and brothers, that we need to learn Arabic. Subhanallah. That is why we need to learn Quranic Arabic. Because that is how you understand the Quran Mubin, the clear Quran. That is how you understand the message of the Quran. That is how you understand the beauty of the Quran. That is how you understand the flavor of the Quran. So inshallah, who is ready to learn Arabic? Inshallah. Type yes in the comment box if you are ready, inshallah. Um, okay, and the last verse is um, to warn whoever is alive and justify the word against the believers. So this Quran will only warn anyone whose heart is alive, okay? Man kana hayyan. Whoever is alive and to justify the words against the believers, yeah? So that, the, you know, we give as much da'wah as we can to the disbelievers, but it's up to them if they want to believe or not. At least you have conveyed the truth to them, right? Okay, awesome. So what did we learn in this lesson? So this is from yesterday. So what did we learn from this lesson, everybody? So we learned... Um, you know, the the state of the people in hell, okay? We're going to be, we learned about um, the hands and feet, we'll talk. And we also learned that the Quran is not poetry, yeah? It is a clear sign. So, inshallah, comment below. Uh, you know, on Instagram or Facebook, or do a post on Instagram, like a story on Instagram, and tag Gutri Arabic Academy and Ukhti, and I'll repost it with your main learnings, okay? That's what you can do. And tomorrow, we will learn the creation of Allah, the mindset of a Muslim, an example for a believer, and we're going to be learning about Kun Fayakun. Who knows what Kun Fayakun means? Who, who can translate Kun Fayakun? So Kun Fayakun... Yes, yes, everybody. It means be and it is. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, kun, be, fayakun, and it is. So we're going to be learning about that. And then that's the end of tafsir of Surah Yasin, subhanallah. So mashallah, I've enjoyed having these lessons with you. And then on Sunday, we will have a break. And then on Monday, we will have the Quranic Arabic course, inshallah. So go ahead and share this uh, course with anybody that you know. Like, you know, I don't know when I'll be doing another course like this. So inshallah, go ahead. And, uh, and inshallah, after the course, we'll be doing more free classes. Uh, we'll do hadith classes, inshallah. So that will be uh, very interesting as well. So yes, make sure to register for the five-day Arabic course. And inshallah, I will see you tomorrow. So everybody, please come tomorrow. Um, inshallah, we'll be doing a small dua uh, and a khatam. We'll have an ending. Um, and inshallah, uh, we'll make a small dua for the people of the world. Um, you know, because after we do a good deed, it's really good to make a dua after every good deed, you know. Um, so Allah Ta'ala will accept it, inshallah. I looking forward to everybody, inshallah. Okay. Okay then, inshallah. I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.